Okay, so uh, in the morning I tried to explain why uh, if we are trying to uncover some larger unbroken symmetry phase of string theory, uh, ADS3 is very special. Uh, and uh, uh, so in the rest of these lectures, I will concentrate on a particular vacuum uh, of ADS3, namely uh, the ADS3 uh, times S3 times D4 vacuum of string theory or uh, <coughs> uh, so uh, of the type two string theory. Uh, so this, uh, 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 so I, I, I will say a few words about this, but just uh, 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 so that you get uh, uh, an idea of where I'm going, I'll just give you a sort of a preview of what I, I will try to cover in the rest of these, uh, in the remaining couple of lectures. Uh, so that you don't get lost, uh, uh, so uh, uh, at least you have the broad picture even if uh, uh, you get lost in the technicalities. Uh, uh, so firstly, uh, this will be a vacuum with a very large, exponentially bigger exponentially larger than the Vassilia uh, uh, unbroken gauge symmetry. So that is the first thing I will uh, uh, try to explain, or equivalently, the dual CFT will have a very large number of, uh, uh, exponentially larger number of conserved currents than the bilinear ones that I showed you. Uh, uh, that's, of course, if you know the CFT, that's not a great surprise. Uh, that's a, it's a free CFT and there are lots of these things. The, the really interesting thing about this, uh, this unbroken gauge symmetry is the way you can organize it. Uh, uh, so it, it can be organized in terms of uh, representations uh, of uh, higher spin symmetry uh, or a W infinity symmetry. I, I, I will use these somewhat interchangeably. Sometimes uh, one needs to be a little careful to distinguish between the two. As I said in the morning, the asymptotic symmetry is usually this N brown henno like enhancement of the higher spin symmetry, but there's a very definite uh, relation between the two. If you wish, this is the so-called wedge algebra for those who know what that means, uh, this is the wedge algebra of that. Uh, 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 any case, um, uh, uh, the, uh, you can organize it in terms of a Vassiliev type higher spin symmetry in terms of representations of this, which I will sort of schematically write like this. There's a sort of a infinity of them, uh, which can be labeled by an integer n. So if you wish n equal to one, n equal to two, so on. Uh, uh, so the, each of these is a representation so, uh, of W infinity. Uh, in particular, the n equal to two corresponds to the W infinity algebra or the higher spin algebra itself. And each of these columns is uh, in this way of drawing and representing it is a, is a representation of this. So it's a, there's a highest weight vector and there's a sort of a tower. So that's what a column is supposed to, uh, uh, to denote. So there is a... Uh, Whole set of uh, uh, whole set of uh, uh, higher spin generators, um, uh, whole set of uh, uh, currents or equivalently gauge fields, uh, uh, but of which the Vassiliev one, uh, uh, the, uh, the corresponding to the bilinears, uh, like I talked about in the morning, is just one, and there's a there's a there's a whole tower of them, uh, and uh, uh, and we'll call this the vertical W infinity or higher spin uh, uh, algebra, uh, higher spin, this is the vertical higher spin uh, uh, algebra according to which we are classifying things. Uh, but the uh, somewhat remarkable uh, thing is that uh, uh, there is a novel additional 
a higher spin symmetry, uh, uh, which, uh, so this is the full set of higher, sp the, the exponentially larger set of gauge symmetries uh, have been organized this way, but there's actually a novel additional higher spin symmetry uh, which also organizes Uh, these uh, uh, gauge symmetries or this uh, uh, of these conserved currents, uh, and this one is a higher spin symmetry which organizes these generators, which here are organized in columns. Uh, it organizes them in an orthogonal way in terms of rows, uh, and in which, uh, again, labeled by an integer, uh, and in which this that say the top row will correspond to this other W infinity or higher spin symmetry, which we'll call a horizontal uh, W infinity symmetry. Uh, 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 so there's an additional one. This is the horizontal one. It's different from, the, uh, from this vertical one. And in terms of which, you can organize things in terms of, again, representations of these. So again, there's an integer. Uh, let's call it m. So you have m equal to 1 will correspond to this horizontal symmetry. Then there is m equal to 2, etc. So the whole thing sort of forms what, what we call a higher spin square uh, because the Algebra between any two elements in this uh, in this is determined by both these two in term the commutator between two elements in this uh, in I should actually use maybe two different colors uh, if, these are highest weight unitary representations of the W infinity algebra uh, I don't see any color but anyway um, uh, so. Uh, uh, so there's a, uh, uh, so the commutator between any two elements here uh, can be reduced to uh, commutators of both these horizontal and these uh, uh, vertical uh, higher spin symmetries. Uh, and this forms, I think, a quite a novel structure which we call the higher spin square. Uh, so I should say uh, this is work with Matthias Gabardiel. Uh, uh, and uh, so most of it is in a paper that came out in February that builds on something that came out last June. Uh, so, uh, uh, so, uh, so this uh, higher spin square is a somewhat, at least to us, it was somewhat unusual and novel, uh, but we realized that there's a sort of a, no, uh, a, a toy model of this which is probably familiar to all of you, I'm sure, uh, which we'll call the Clifford algebra square, and which will sort of illustrate this, uh, and so which is a sort of a baby version of this, uh, uh, of this uh, uh, structure, uh, um, uh, just to give you some intuition. So that's roughly the plan of what I will uh, try to tell you in the next, uh, this lecture in the next. Uh, so let me uh, start with this vacuum, ADS3 times uh, S3 times T4, uh, and it's dual CFT. Uh, um, so, uh, so this is the this is one of the canonical examples of ADS CFT. Actually, uh, um, in fact, in the original paper of Maldacena itself, this was one of the examples, uh, and. Uh, uh, it comes from, it's obtained uh, in the same way as many of the other examples. It was, it's argued for in much the same way. You consider uh, type 2 uh, uh, string theory. Uh, uh, with D1 and D5 brains. Uh, on, let's say, R4, comma 1 times T4 times a circle, uh, which, so this will be a sort of a small 
T4, small meaning stringy size, so we will mostly not have to worry about this, uh, but this we will take to be sort of a large circle. Anyway, these details won't be so important. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, we'll consider D1, D5 system uh, with, uh, so wrapped on uh, the T4 times S1, namely the D1 brain is wrapped on the S1, and the D5 brain is wrapped on all these. Uh, um, so, uh, um, uh, and uh, uh, so the, uh, uh, so there, there's a, uh, so you can write down the supergravity solution corresponding to this. Uh, again, I won't write all this, uh, uh, but uh, these are standard things that there's a supergravity solution corresponding uh, to this uh, brain configuration, uh, and it's near horizon geometry. Uh, is uh, ADS3. Uh, times S3 times uh, T4. Uh, 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 so this T4 is essentially uh, uh, sort of that T4, uh, but the, the remaining six directions uh, uh, assemble into an ADS3 times S3. Uh, and uh, uh, so this is the uh, sort of the gravity picture or the closed string picture of this string background, uh, but as in the usual ADS-CFT derivations, the duality comes from the existence of a, a dual gauge theory picture of these brains. In this case, this brain system, uh, uh, so the near horizon geometry is some kind of a low energy limit of the string theory. So it, at low energies, the uh, D1, D5 uh, system is a uh, one plus one dimensional gauge theory. So basically, because that's why you need the T4 to be small so that those directions, uh, you will, uh, th those will be uh, uh, stringy uh, energy states uh, and uh, uh, and this one plus one dimension, this is sort of the S1 direction and this is the time direction. Uh, uh, and you have a one plus one dimensional gauge theory, which even further in the IR flows to a two dimensional CFT. Uh, and uh, though there isn't a, a complete derivation of this, it is believed that there's good reason to believe uh, that uh, this CFT uh, is uh, a deformation uh, of a symmetric product CFT, symmetric product orbifold CFT. Uh, so what is that? Uh, uh, so, this, uh, so this is the symmetric product where you take n copies of the T4 uh, and you mod out by the symmetric group acting on these n copies. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, so this is a target space uh, uh, for this uh, two-dimensional CFT. Uh, so you consider where n is uh, Q1, Q5, where Q1 and Q5 are the number of uh, uh, these d brains, uh, and uh, uh, so there's good reason to believe this, though it's never been completely sort of uh, uh, proven. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, among the reasons to believe it, of course, are uh, various things like the matching of the moduli space, and more importantly, this is the context in which the original Strominger Waffer derivation of the microscopics of the black hole entropy of the five dimensional black hole. Uh, that you get when you put some momentum along this S1. Uh, this is the context in which uh, the microscopic entropy of that black hole uh, from this geometric picture was matched from the uh, counting of states, in particular of the elliptic genus of this uh, uh, two-dimensional CFT. So there's 
good reason to believe that uh, it's somewhere on the modelized space of this CFT. So this is a free CFT because uh, we basically have and this T4, so this is actually, a, I forgot to say, it's a supersymmetric theory. It's, in fact, a 4, 4 superconformal field theory uh, for left and right supersymmetries. And, uh, uh, and this, uh, uh, so, uh, so this is essentially uh, uh, n copies of this, uh, of the simplest 4,4 4 CFT you can think of, namely with four bosons and their partner fermions, uh, you take n copies of that and, uh, uh, and mod out by the symmetric group. So it's an orbifold of a free theory, uh, which is, again, uh, can be is described by the, uh, is essentially a free theory. So this is, uh, uh, this is the uh, basic CFT. Uh, and uh, at the generic point in the modelized space of this um, uh, of the, uh, this uh, uh, of this background corresponds uh, to a deformation of the CFT. So the, the this CFT is, if you wish, the analog of the uh, free Young Mills. So this is the analog of uh, of free Young Mills that we described earlier, so sort of lambda equal to zero point, and then there's some deformations corresponding. Now it's not just a single, there are 20 marginal parameters, uh, of which four are sort of interesting marginal directions. Uh, and uh, 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 so there are, uh, uh, so those are deformations. You, uh, you can go away from this free theory. You can turn on marginal operators and the, uh, the, that space uh, of uh, uh, deformations uh, uh, leads, to, leads you to sort of the general uh, uh, background of this kind of it, in, uh, the gravity limit will be one extreme, just like we had uh, in the morning for free Young-Mills theory. So this is the analog of the free Young-Mills. It's a free theory. Uh, 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 so, uh, uh, so this is the point you would naturally associate with the sort of tensionless limit of, uh, uh, of this background. And indeed, as we will see, uh, like in the higher dimensions, there will be a, a higher spin symmetry at this point. There will be uh, 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 higher spin generators, but not just them. There will be all these other infinite ones, but certainly there will be uh, the higher spin generators, the Vassiliev type gauge symmetries. Uh, uh, so, so it's good reason to associate uh, uh, this uh, with the, so this corresponds to the uh, sort of the tensionless limit in the, in the sense we talked about in the morning. Uh, okay, so, um, uh, so that's, uh, uh, the background we are going to uh, talk about. Uh, and uh, so it's a, this is a very explicit two-dimensional CFT about which you can say many things. Uh, 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 and uh, uh, so exactly. Uh, and uh, in particular, we will be interested in uh, the unbroken, uh, the conserved currents, uh, or uh, the, from the bulk point of view, the unbroken gauge. Uh, uh, invariances. Uh, so we can easily address that in this theory because it's a free theory and uh, as I said, it's an orbifold of some free bosons and free fermions. Uh, so, uh, so that's what we want to uh, first address. So, so we want to look at the chiral sector or what uh, you would call the chiral algebra of this two-dimensional CFT at this orbifold point. Uh, okay, so uh, uh, in particular, we, we uh, I mean, actually, in, our, in the first paper that we studied, we looked at the full partition function. In this paper, we actually looked at the full partition function of this CFT, which is actually known, and I'll maybe 
uh, just <laughs> explain that uh, uh, briefly. Uh, but uh, you can specialize then to the set of states which are chiral, namely the, which have uh, h bar equal to zero uh, 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 or, or equivalently the anti-holomorphic path. Uh, uh, so, um, uh, but uh, it's not very difficult to study the full partition function as well at the Oberfold point since it's a free theory. Uh, and uh, uh, in fact, one can uh, uh, organize all the states in the CFT in terms of this Vasiliev unbroken symmetry, uh, and not just the chiral states, uh, but I will focus in this lectures only on the chiral states, but I, just, I wanted to just tell you that you can actually organize all the states of the CFT uh, uh, in terms of uh, representations of the higher spin, uh, this vertical algebra. Uh, and, um, uh, but, uh, but again, um, we will mostly focus on this. But uh, let me first quote for you uh, the expression for the full partition function uh, because uh, it, it's uh, simple enough. So there's a simple uh, formula for the uh, full partition function. Now when I say partition function, I'm not talking of anything like a supersymmetric partition function. I'm not talking of a elliptic genus or a uh, with an index or anything like that. I'm talking about the full genuine partition function trace q to the L0, q bar to the L0, and if there are some chemical potentials, um, uh, uh, something like this, no minus one to the Fs or anything like that. So we are, we are looking at the full partition function. Uh, so of course, this quantity will not be protected as you go away from the Obifold point, but our interest at the moment is not to go away from the Obifold point, but to understand the structure at the Obifold point. Uh, so, um, so there's a simple formula for this, uh, which was derived many years ago by Digraph, Moore, Valinde, and Valinde. Uh, and let me give a reference uh, for seeing uh, there's some nice pedagogical lectures by Digraph, uh, which if you want to learn more about this, you can uh, 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 <clears throat> look at uh, this reference. Uh, so this uh, uh, partition function, uh, of, uh, uh, of it's a general formula you can write uh, for the partition function. Uh, 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 so if we, ha if we know Z of X, where X is some CFT, uh, and if we know this, uh, if we can write this as some uh, C of H, H bar, uh, uh, and then let's say r r bar uh, and q to the h q to the h bar so if we know this partition function z of some uh, this sum is over all the h h bars supposing we know this full partition function uh, we know all these coefficients uh, then the partition function of x to the n copies of x mod out by Sn uh, is, is given by the gen following generating function. So this generating function uh, is, uh, I'll write it as z of p, um, uh, let me write the generating function. Uh, the generating function is uh, of all these for any n, so it's more convenient to write in terms of this generating function, uh, with p being the uh, uh, with p being the um, uh, well, if you wish, let's start with zero so that there's a one. Uh, uh, 
so uh, P is just a formal parameter for this generating series. Uh, and this is given in a very explicit way in terms of uh, product, an uh, infinite product. Uh, So there's um, an infinite product, this is p to the n, uh, and uh, q to the h, q bar to the h bar, uh, y to all these chemical potentials, these are some r charges. Uh, 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 so it's given by this, and in terms of these coefficients that appear over here uh, in this, um, uh, in the original, uh, so you can read it, there's actually a condition as well, h minus h bar should be congruent to zero mod n. Uh, and this n labels various twisted sectors, n greater than one labels various twisted sectors. Uh, um, uh, so this is uh, an explicit formula proved by uh, these people, I mean, they, their main interest there was for the elliptic genus, but the same argument works for the full partition function. Uh, and uh, uh, so there's an explicit formula. Uh, so if I know these coefficients, uh, and in the free theory, x in our case is just t4, uh, uh, we know these, we will write down explicitly the answer. Uh, for this, you can write down the generating function uh, for the nth symmetric product uh, of, uh, uh, of this, uh, 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 of, uh, for, of this CFT. Um, so, I, I mean, this may look a little bit mysterious, but uh, just to demystify it a little bit, uh, let me just point out a simpler case, which may be more familiar to all of you. Yes, there was a question. Can? Yeah, so these are chemical potentials, Ys and Y bars, for the uh, R charge. Uh. <coughs> so um, uh, uh, so this, this symmetric product, taking the symmetric product is like multi-particling. Uh, uh, a single particle wave function, a single particle partition function, uh, uh, for instance, in statistical mechanics, uh, you may have often encountered the problem where you have n free particles. You know their individual single particle uh, partition function. So supposing we know uh, Q is e to the minus beta h, let's say. So supposing we know the single particle wave function, uh, the partition function, uh, 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 then uh, the, a natural question is what is the multi-particle uh, 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 partition function? Uh, and, uh, and if these are, for instance, say bosons, uh, let's say we consider the case of bosons, uh, uh, let me write it here. Let's say these are bosons. Uh, uh, then, uh, 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 then the multiparticle uh, uh, partition function is something uh, uh, you can again write uh, a generating function for it, sort of a grand canonical ensemble for it, uh, where p is the uh, fugacity. Uh, so for uh, 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 for the, you can write the grand canonical for a, a partition function uh, with fixed number n. Uh, and uh, uh, this is in fact just given by Uh, 
it's just given by uh, these coefficients, uh, but they appear in the exponent uh, over here, and this is because of the uh, boson, the usual rule for boson uh, multiparticling. When you expand this, you, it's not difficult to convince yourself if you have not seen this before, uh, that uh, putting these uh, up in the numerator essentially counts. So these are the degeneracies of the, uh, of the single particle states, and uh, putting this up in the exponent basically accounts for you the number of ways you can distribute bosons uh, amongst so many degenerate states. So that's what uh, this is. For fermions, uh, you would just put uh, this thing in the numerator. Uh, uh, so that's the fermionic uh, uh, case. So this thing that is appearing in the, uh, uh, in the numerator or uh, denominator is, uh, is, uh, uh, is a reflection of this uh, 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 fermionic statistics uh, or bosonic statistics. And, uh, uh, and uh, he, uh, this is a, uh, sort of a simpler version of, of uh, how things work in the general case, except that here you have also twisted sectors and so on. But in the untwisted sector, which is where the, which was, uh, where the chiral uh, uh, part will lie, uh, we don't have, to, uh, it's basically this, this logic. So, be, uh, so essentially, uh, the chiral sector of the T4 symmetric product is the is in fact just the multiparticling of the chiral sector of uh, of a single T4 theory well, I should say is, is not, is, I shouldn't say is the, but is in, okay, I'll just clarify as of the single T4 uh, uh, theory. By that, what I mean uh, is that if you want to know all the chiral generators uh, of the symmetric product uh, uh, theory, but you want to know, if you want to know their, uh, um, uh, uh, so, uh, uh, so th this is the full partition function. The full partition function uh, uh, contains uh, both single particle and multi-particle states uh, uh, in a general field theory. Uh, and uh, at large n, if you are interested in uh, uh, so this duality uh, uh, over here, uh, we, we are going to look at it in the n goes to infinity limit. You remember the diagram that I drew in the morning. Uh, this is the classical limit. So, uh, so the n in this case is this. So we will take this to infinity. Uh, and uh, so in this large n limit, uh, the, uh, uh, the chiral sector is just the multiparticling of the single T4 theory, meaning uh, that you... Uh, uh, you, you just, you can associate the single particle generators, so let me maybe write that, the single particle generators uh, of the chiral algebra of the symmetric product, of the chiral sector of the chiral algebra uh, of of the symmetric product uh, is in one-to-one -one correspondence with the chiral, the full chiral algebra uh, of a single T4. So, uh, so what do I mean by this? Uh, what, I, what I mean to say is that you can consider a single T4 CFT and write down all the currents, that means the holomorphic uh, and anti-holomorphic uh, quantities in this theory, that's what will give you the chiral algebra of this T4 theory, and I am claiming in the large n limit uh, uh, 
uh, the, uh, so as n goes to infinity, in the large n limit, uh, the, uh, the generators, the single particle generators of the chiral algebra of this are in one is to one correspondence uh, with this. And the logic is essentially that uh, I, I'm, I'm, going, I'm not going to go into the details, but the logic is essentially that of this multiparticling, the, the fact that the symmetric product is some kind of multiparticling. Uh, Uh, you can, uh, so uh, uh, the lambda going to zero limit uh, is, uh, I mean, I, I'm assuming that we are at the free point. Uh, and I'm taking that as the definition of the lambda goes to zero. Because, uh, yeah, so uh, there's some point in the modelized space of the CFT where it's a free theory. And I'm calling that the lambda equal to zero point. Uh, and there I have an additional parameter n. Uh, which I will need to take to be large. It depends on, yeah, what you treat as the deformation away from this free point. Uh, um, uh, so in some ways, it is indeed natural to take the limit that you said, uh, take Q5 equal to 1, for instance, and Q1 to be large. And in some ways, that's what we effectively do, uh, uh, and not in this paper. Uh, though I'm not 100% sure that's strictly necessary. I could take the point of view that I just stated, namely, I'm at this free theory point, and uh, this n is just a parameter, in which case I'm agnostic about how to take q1 and q5. But I suspect that, and this is probably related to the confusions about where exactly in the modelized space the symmetric product lies uh, in the d1, d5 modelized space, and perhaps to make that connection you might need to take the limit in the way you said. Uh, but uh, at the moment, yeah, OK. Mm. Uh, so, um, uh, uh, so what do I mean by this one is to one correspondence? Note that I'm not going to quite say, I'm not, it would be wrong of me to say that the chiral algebra of this theory is the same, or the single particle generators are the same as the chiral algebra of the T4 theory. But I just want to say that there's a one is to one correspondence. So let me just illustrate that because, in fact, uh, uh, and I will mostly work in the particular case not of the T4. Uh, I, uh, uh, so I can make the similar statement with, uh, say, T4 go replaced by a single boson, for instance. And the logic is much the same. It is just for the symmetric product. So let me just illustrate it for this example so that you don't have all the complications of supersymmetry and extra bosons and so on. So if I uh, uh, just consider a single boson, uh, uh, the, uh, so when I say I can make the same statement here with this T4 replaced by R, this would be just R, R to the n mod Sn. So what I'm saying is that corresponding to some uh, so, for instance, this uh, phi is a single boson. Uh, I, uh, this is an element of the chiral algebra of a single boson. I just take del phi. Del phi is holomorphic quantity. Uh, uh, I, I, this, I can raise it to some power. That's a holomorphic current of the single boson uh, of the uh, single boson. That's an... Uh, uh, an element of this chiral algebra, uh, but I will associate to that the following generator of the uh, symmetric product uh, chiral algebra. So this is now the symmetric product chiral algebra has n bosons, uh, and you mod out by the symmetric group. So this is an element of that chiral algebra, which is of course, by construction, invariant under the symmetric group, so it belongs to the untwisted sector uh, of this orbifold, uh, and uh, uh, is built out of the n boson. So I, I can always make a correspondence. You give me an element of the chiral algebra uh, over here, I just symmetrize it over all the elements, and I give you an element of the chiral algebra over here. Uh, and uh, uh, so, so I can do this. Uh, for any current, any spin s current, I just do the same thing. I take 
the n copies of this, uh, and uh, I have uh, an element of this chiral algebra. Uh, uh, why I want to stress that this is, uh, this is, uh, 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 why I wanted to stress uh, that this is a, only a correspondence is that in this, in this single boson case or the say, T4 case, uh, not all the elements of the chiral algebra are independent generators. So in a single boson theory, del phi square is, of course, the stress energy tensor. Uh, uh, and del phi to the fourth is, in some sense, the square of the stress energy tensor in some, uh, in some appropriately uh, uh, defined uh, way. Uh, so these are not independent generators of the chiral algebra in the, in the single boson theory. But here, uh, del phi, uh, uh, but this, Two will this corresponds to the stress tensor of the symmetric product theory, uh, and this corresponds to a, a similar generator. Um, but this is not equal to T of Z, the whole square, in the symmetric product. So there are independent generators. In the symmetric product theory, they seem to be they are uh, uh, the single boson theory. Of course, these are uh, th these are all uh, just the same. But here, they, these are all independent generators. And so, uh, so basically, the single particle generators of the uh, chiral algebra over here, you can write them down in one is to one correspondence with this. But I wanted to just stress that. I'm not saying that it is the same as the chiral algebra uh, of, uh, 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 in terms of the algebra structure. Uh, okay, so, uh, and in fact, uh, this is where the large n limit will be important. At finite n, there will be relations amongst all these generators. But at infinite n, the, these will all be strictly independent generators. Uh, and so because there will be no relations amongst these. So at so that's uh, important to appreciate. Um, okay, so uh, so what I have. Uh, told you is a way to enumerate all the uh, generators of this unbroken algebra. And I've already, in fact, uh, exhibited to you generators which are not just bilinears. So for instance, this del phi to the fourth, this sort of, uh, this is an element of the chiral algebra, a single particle generator uh, of the uh, chiral algebra, the chiral sector of the symmetric product theory. And it is not uh, so it's definitely not bilinears, and I can write out many, many such uh, things. So obviously, the single particle sector states you can see are much bigger than uh, just that of the bilinears, which are a small subset. Uh, so, uh, so this enumeration uh, tells us that uh, uh, gives us the uh, generating function for the uh, 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 for the uh, for the single particle generators. So the, the generating function is nothing but the partition function in the case of the T4 theory. Going back to the T4 theory, it is just the partition function of, of a T4, of the chiral sector of a T4 theory, which is, as I said, four. Uh, so this is just equal to 
uh, chiral sector uh, of four bosons uh, plus four fermions. And that's nothing but the sort of the usual free fermion uh, partition function for the free bosons. They carry opposite R charge. Two of them carry one charge into the other. So that's why this is the this is the uh, 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 the the fermionic part, uh, so the, uh, the chiral sector of the fermionic part, and then you also have for free four free bosons, which is just this, uh, because uh, this is the partition function of a single boson, and then um, one at, so the four corresponds to the four four bosons. And these are the four fermions with equal and opposite R charge. So, so th this is a generating function which counts. It enumerates all the chiral generators for you. Uh, because this is just the chiral sector of four free bosons and chiral part of four free fermions. Uh, uh, there's only Qs, no Q bars. Uh, so that's why these are just the... Um, uh, this is just the chiral sector. So this is an enumeration of the number of generators. And you can see that this is exponentially large, the number of generators at any given spin, because spin is now, so for a given delta, which is equal to S, uh, there is a Cardi growth. Uh, of the number of states. So the degeneracy, this, so this is an enumeration, and it tells you that at any given, so for Q to the S, that's going to tell you the number of generators at spin S, uh, there will be a Cardi growth. So it will be essentially e to the square root S times some coefficient, because it's effectively like some C equal to uh, sixth theory or something, uh, it will have uh, uh, some coefficient and times e to the root s. So it's a very large, it's unlike the Vassiliev growth. Where in the Vassiliev theory, remember I said that, I emphasized that there's only a fixed number of uh, uh, states, a fixed number of uh, currents or gauge, equivalently gauge fields for a given s. Uh, and uh, whereas here, the number, number is growing exponentially. So that's why uh, uh, I was saying that this is exponentially larger than the Vassiliev uh, growth. Uh, uh, so you have a much uh, larger set of single particle generators or, cons uh, or conserved currents or uh, 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 the chiral algebra compared to the Vassiliev case. Is this clear? Okay, so so we've uh, uh, so we've understood sort of there's a large number. So in the by the gauge gravity duality, as I said in the morning, uh, each of these single particle generators. Remember, it's always the single. Part, why did I focus on the single particle generators? Because those are the ones which you will associate it to the fields in the bulk. The multi-particle generators are multi. Uh, just multi-particle excitations of those fields in the bulk. So that's why it was important to focus on the single particle ones, which, as I argued, are in correspondence with those of a single T4. Uh, uh, and they, this is indeed the uh, enumeration of all the single, uh, of all the chiral uh, currents of a single T4 theory. Okay, so, so now we want to understand how to organize this. So, so this is maybe, yeah, I, I mean, if you have thought a little about the symmetric product CFT at any point, it would be obvious to you that there's a large chiral sector and this, this is just uh, 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 that. But the interesting thing is to organize this sector. This is a large algebra and a large, this thing, it's not very useful to just say it in this way. If you want to use this, unbroken symmetry 
and to relate it to the Vasiliev symmetry, which is present uh, uh, generic, I mean, which as we saw earlier is the generic unbroken symmetry. If you want to uh, see this as some enlargement of the Vasiliev symmetry, you should organize these in terms of the Vasiliev symmetry. Uh, and indeed, the Vasiliev type higher spin symmetry is a subsector of this chiral algebra. And, uh, uh, and, uh, and, uh, uh, and one can show that. But uh, actually, I will, to remove various complications or uh, just additional baggage coming from just having four bosons and four fermions and so on, uh, I, I will restrict myself to a simpler case just to illustrate, but things will, you will see, go exactly the same way, just like I did over here. So I'll make the same restriction of restricting to a single boson. This is also good to, because it shows you that nothing depends on supersymmetry in all this. It's just something that would exist for single boson. It's nothing to do with supersymmetry. Uh, um, so, uh, so, we'll, uh, so to organize this uh, in terms of the higher spin symmetry, uh, we will restrict to uh, all the statements that I make here uh, are just as good for a single boson. And uh, so we will stick to that. So for a single boson, a symmetric product, uh, as uh, the chiral algebra of uh, single particle generators, single particle symmetries, is one to one to the uh, chiral sector of a single boson, uh, as I described. And the enumeration of that is just the single boson partition function, namely 1 minus q to the n. So it's just uh, I have gotten rid of most of the baggage. All these fermions I have gotten rid of. And instead of the 4, I have just a 1. So it's just uh, so if we were to do the same thing for a single boson, this is the enumeration of all the single particle chiral generators. And we can now. Uh, understand this, shorn of all complications. Uh, so, uh, uh, so this uh, single uh, boson uh, uh, chiral algebra uh, is, so the generators are things like this. I mean, uh, for instance, this was an example uh, uh, of, uh, uh, of such, uh, uh, of the chiral algebra. Uh, of a single boson. Uh, in particular, the stress tensor was uh, uh, this quadratic uh, one. Uh, but the, there is a W infinity, or uh, as I said, W infinity or higher spin uh, subalgebra uh, from the quadratic. Uh, or bilinear, uh, uh, bilinears. Uh, 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 so they are basically. So you can write W at spin s is schematically some uh, So basically, it's uh, del to the k phi, del to the s minus k phi. So they're quadratic in phi, but with s derivatives uh, sprinkled with some combinatorial coefficients. Uh, uh, and some combination of this is a primary, uh, and which is a spin s primary. Uh, uh, and this is a, a subset of this, or subalgebra of this, uh, of this uh, big chiral algebra, 
uh, because these are clearly holomorphic. They just involve the del. Uh, del is del del z, by the way. Uh, so, um, uh, so these are, this is in fact what is called W infinity at, in terms of the general family of W infinity of lambda. This is the particular case when lambda is equal to one. Uh, and uh, it's the uh, brown Hino extension of the HS lambda equal to one uh, uh, higher spin algebra, which is its so-called wedge algebra. Uh, so, uh, so this is uh, the subset uh, of this. Uh, uh, so I, I had made the statement that we could organize all the states in terms of representations of this W infinity. So in this case of the single boson, uh, we'll see that all the states, well, I'll at least motivate uh, why all the states can be written in terms of representations of this uh, algebra. Mm. Uh, so in fact, the following monomials, del to the k, uh, del to the m1 phi, del to the m2 phi, so I can consider these monomials where these mi are greater than or equal to 1. Uh, these are elements of the chiral algebra, because uh, they are all holomorphic quantities. Del phi is holomorphic, if other derivatives will make. So these are monomials in the chiral algebra of a single boson. And as I said, you can make it in correspondence by the symmetrization to, to, the, uh, to the symmetric product. So, uh, so I'll uh, write, uh, write down uh, just the uh, one in the single boson theory, and you can always translate it to the other case. Uh, so I claim that these monomials are in, uh, uh, so, uh, so these monomials for a fixed N, so this is something, there are N phi's and with arbitrary numbers of derivatives on them. These for fixed N, uh, transform in an irreducible representation of this W infinity of one, or this W infinity algebra under these. Uh, so that's not difficult to, because it's a free theory. Uh, uh, you, you can convince yourself that these uh, I in a irreducible representation. In fact, the general representations, uh, so we can even say which one, uh, the, this is the representation. So a general representation uh, of, uh, uh, of W infinity uh, uh, of lambda can be labeled by sort of two labels, which are, uh, which are if you wish, uh, Dinkin labels or Young diagrams, uh, uh, and uh, uh, um, and uh, uh, and uh, and this particular. Uh, so this is a this is, this is a general. So a general representation is labeled by uh, these labels, and these monomials transform in the representation where lambda plus is basically. the nth anti-symmetric representation uh, uh, with sort of n boxes of a young tableau uh, uh, in, a, mm, uh, in a vertical young tableau, and lambda minus is zero, is the trivial representation. So it's a very canonical representation, uh, uh, and uh, uh, so I claim that that's uh, the uh, representation, and just to sort of flesh it out a little bit more, let me 
So, uh, and, uh, uh, so of course, this is for a fixed n, the same n that appears over here. Uh, so if I fix n, so the things which are sort of uh, with n flies and arbitrary m's uh, obeying this, they form one representation. Now if I let n vary from 1 to infinity, that covers all the generators of the chiral algebra. Because the arbitrary generator, you can write in terms of, it will lie in one of these this thing. So, so, I, I, so that means I'm claiming that this, so this is the n that I was mentioning here, these columns, and to, to flesh it out a little, uh, if this is indeed the case, then my enumeration of my partition function, the free boson, just the chiral part of the free boson partition function, should become a character decomposition of these representations. So indeed, that is true, and the character decomposition is the following. The character decomposition of the character of this representation, I claim, is, is just this. The, this is the character of this representation. So this is what this is what is called the wedge character uh, of this representation. Uh, uh, so this is uh, equal to this uh, uh, character, uh, I claim. And this identity, this is actually an identity. Uh, uh, it's, uh, I, I will, in fact, prove it for you, this identity, in a moment. It's not a very difficult identity. It goes, it's... It's a special case of what is sometimes called the Q-binomial theorem. Uh, and you will find it in combinatorics books. Uh, it's an identity due to Gauss. But uh, 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 so this identity uh, is, uh, is this decomposition is, uh, is, uh, is basically uh, this identity. And how do you see this? Um, you see this by... Uh, by looking at these monomials. So these monomials are in correspondence. So by the state operator correspondence, you can... If alphas are the sort of chiral modes of the free boson, uh, these are in correspondence with, uh, 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 with states like this uh, in, in the Fox space. Uh, and as I vary my m's uh, and, uh, and my n's, I generate uh, the full Fox space. But you see that I can arrange, these are boson, there's a single boson, I can arrange this Fox space in the following way. Remember, these mi's are greater than or equal to 1. What I, these are bosons, so I can arrange them in some ascending order of their mode numbers. So these k's, these k's, are greater than or equal to zero, uh, and therefore this is in sort of non-decreasing order of their mode numbers, uh, and uh, all the way up to summation k i uh, up to n. So the mode numbers are just uh, increasing. Uh, and uh, so, uh, and what is the, uh, uh, so, uh, uh, so this, these are clearly just different ways of relabeling the same thing. And, uh, uh, and uh, now you can count very easily what, how many of these there are. Uh, it's just uh, uh, the total mode number uh, is, uh, so, uh, so the total mode number is n because there are, there's a minus one I've put everywhere because there has to be at least, these mi's are greater than or equal to one, so there's a minus one in each of them. So the total mode number is n plus, uh, n plus kn into one 
plus kn minus 1 into 2 plus kn minus 2 into 3 all the way up to plus k1 into n, uh, right? Because k1 appears in all of them, k2 appears in all but one of them, and so on. Uh, uh, so this is the total mode number. How many ways do you have to distribute a given mode number into this? That's precisely this. There's a q to the n, and then this just counts the number of ways of distributing this. So that's the reason. That, so this identity is just, this is the proof of this identity. It's just a matter of uh, organizing this. And if you look, uh, and these are indeed, uh, I mean, these, uh, the characters of these representations are known, and you can go and check and see that these are indeed this. So this decomposition is, uh, is really a character decomposition of all these other uh, of these representations. And as I said, the n equal to 2 corresponds to, so n equal to 2 over here uh, uh, corresponds to the bilinears, which are the W infinity generators themselves. Uh, and uh, 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 yeah, uh, and uh, uh, and, and, and so, uh, so you can think of the whole thing as, as I said, the whole chiral algebra is organized in terms of these columns. Each of these has this W infinity of 1 or this vertical W infinity of which this was the, this was the original W infinity and these are all representations. Uh, which transform in a particular way. This is, if you wish, the adjoint representation. Um, by the way, the n equal to 1 is rather trivial. It is just del phi, a single, the, a single del phi. In fact, these are just L minus 1 descendants, so that's a little trivial. N, my, n equal to 2 is the first non-trivial one, and then these are all other representations. So this is the uh, first thing that I was saying that you can organize this chiral algebra in terms of representations of this vertical W infinity algebra. And uh, uh, so, so this tells you, in fact, so therefore, if I wanted to take the commutator of some object here uh, with something over here, the commutator is determined by the fact that this is transforming in this particular representation of this uh, 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 vertical W infinity. and so. Uh, uh, so it's just given by W infinity uh, representation theory. Uh, and so, so that is, of course, not the most general thing. We don't want just commutators of this with uh, elements here. We want commutators of this with this. Uh, and that, uh, I mean, you can, of course, use the chiral algebra to, to compute that, but that's not, we want to do it in a sort of in a more, in a nicer way to sort of see the least, the minimal structure that is there, and that's where this other horizontal W infinity will come into play, but that I will describe tomorrow. Uh, so thanks.